Good, Taylor. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for doing this. For having me. This is awesome. It's so much fun. So I like to start these off by getting to know you a little bit. So how did you become a designer and how did you know this line of work was for you? Well, it was, it's, it's a long, it's a little bit of a long story, but I'll share it with you. So um, when I went to college, I went to college for speech pathology and she needed to go to graduate school. And I didn't get into graduate school my first year. Um, so I wound up working for the Board of Ed and I figured I'm going to try one last time to get into graduate school. If not, I think I'm going to go to school for design or visual merchandising. I was on the fence. Um, but I felt like I really should go for speech because then I'm going to have a really solid career um, and it wasn't as risky, I felt. So I did get into graduate school and I became a speech pathologist and I worked in several schools and then I found myself working at a college, which I loved. It was about 20 years of doing, working as a speech pathologist, and I felt um, I was getting a little burned out. No, I right. loved everyone I worked with. I worked with the most amazing people, but I also have a child at home who was receiving services too, so I felt like everything was therapy, so I needed a change. So I started taking some drafting classes at night, um, and I fell in love with it. So I decided to just take on a client or two. And I continued working at this college um, for about two years. And then I decided I'm just gonna do this yeah. full time. Yeah. So what does like design mean to you as a whole? You know, as a whole, I mean, <laughs> I feel like to me, design is so just important in so many different areas. I feel like when you're in an environment that is beautiful, you feel good. Um, I feel like there's such an emotional connection to design. So you mentioned being a speech pathologist. So how does that connect to your design work? Well, you know, I think, you know, being a speech pathologist, our main focus is really to um, improve someone's communication skills. And when you're working with clients in design, I mean, communication is everything. I mean, I think it's everything in every field, but for speech, we just have such a focus on it that we are the experts. So, you know, I think that's really been um, really beneficial to the clients that I'm working with. We also, as speech pathologists, we're very um, goal focused. We make goals for our clients and we do everything in our power for them to achieve those goals. And that's how I treat this business too, that I have an ultimate goal and I break that down to little goals and make sure we're going to, I'm going to have really happy clients. When was Blake and Dan born? Um, is there a story behind the name and how did that start? So when I decided to open up my little business, um, one of my children is, he's really construction obsessed. So I figured if I opened up this business, maybe one day it'll work for me. Although, who knows if that will happen. So Blake and Dane are my children's middle names. Oh, okay. So what have been your favorite projects to work on so far? Oh, it's hard to like come up with a favorite, but I'm going to say, um, my favorite jobs are when the contractors work really closely with me. From like the beginning when I'm working, you know, hand in hand with the contractor, those projects go really, really well and we have really happy clients. Yeah. I would also say the other projects that I really enjoy are the clients who I've worked with and then they call me back to do another space in their home, you know, mm -hmm. six months or a year later. That just feels great. Right. right. Do you have like a signature style or vibe that you like to go for with every house or does it change? You know, I, I have, yes, I have a signature style and I really try to create spaces that are timeless. I think that's really important. I think people are spending a lot of money and you have to be a little careful with some of the trends mm -hmm. because you don't want to spend all this money and then you know, three years later be disappointed with your choices. But I really like mixing um, I like mixing modern with traditional vintage mm -hmm. pieces together. That's, yeah. that's my go-to. Do you find it hard with your clients to like kind of steer them away from what they see on Pinterest and everything like that? And you're like, oh, but it's not going to be great in a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I have to be really honest. 
you know, with my clients. Yeah. And I love when they save pictures and I encourage them and then we'll go through them and I'll give them my opinions. Like, I don't think you should do this because yeah. I don't think you'll be happy in a couple of years. So. so what's your favorite, like, space to design? Like a room or... My favorite space to design, I really do love kitchens. Mm -hmm. I would say kitchens are probably my favorite. Um, it's the hub of a home. That's where yes. we spend the most time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what are the tips for people starting their own design journey in their homes? I mean, my tip always is start with a designer right away when you're starting to think about doing a project. I think sometimes... Um, you know, I'll get phone calls from clients, they have a contractor, they have an architect, they're starting next week, and they can't make decisions, and then I come in. And it's hard to work that way. If I work with them right from the beginning, we can really plan everything out so much better. Um, so I feel like don't wait on the designer part. That should be step one. Okay. At this point, what would you absolutely recommend to a client that they need to have in their home? Like, what is something that you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. Need this. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, what my needs are are different. Every client, you know, has different needs. But you know, I am all about organization. Um, so I'm always just looking for a place for everything. So you spoke earlier about finding a designer early in your design process. So how would you go about finding one and knowing that you found the right one? You know, I tell my potential clients all the time, you know, choose someone who obviously has a really good eye for design and that they're smart, but also choose someone that you like, that your personalities are really meshing well, because... I probably talk to the majority of my clients every day, um, and you really develop this real relationship. Most of them really become friends of mine, so it's really important to really, really like your designer. Yeah. What is your general process as a designer? Well, the first thing is I do is we do exchange inspiration pictures just to get an idea of what style my clients, you know, move towards. Um, and then from there, I might send some pictures to guide them in a different direction or build upon what they like. Um, but the first thing I always do is come in and take a whole bunch of dimensions and make a floor plan. And that floor plan is basically the Bible of this space. And, you know, sometimes my clients will say to me, you know, I, I need a really large sectional for eight people. That's a must. But once I make the floor plan, it will show that's not really going to work. Or we might be able to, you know, use a larger sectional um, so after we get a solid floor plan we start to find um, the furniture the window treatments um, other soft furnishings too like pillows and then lastly we do so you've worked with Homestead before specifically Margie are one of our designers um, what was that like I mean it's been great I mean, Wonderful. Um, Homestead has such a large variety of fabrics, um, different window treatments, and you know, the best part of all is that I feel like everyone here is so knowledgeable. Um, they get great client, you know, great options to my clients. We can work through challenging windows um, and spaces, and. They're really nice to my clients, which makes me happy. Um, my website is blakeanddane.com, and my Instagram is at blakeanddane, and same for Facebook. Everyone, like us on Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube. Um, this is our designer spotlight at Homestead, and if you are a designer and you want to be uh, featured, let me know. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.